Hey everyone, welcome to my tutorial about managing containers with Podman. So today we're going to be focusing on the objectives of the Red Hat Certified System Administrator. So the first thing we want to do is uh, download Podman. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is uh, use sudo yum module install. You can also put a dash y in there. That way it goes through all the props. Okay guys, I skipped a little bit forward for you guys um, so you don't have to wait. Um, that took about a couple of minutes. Alright, so the next thing you want to do is uh, validate the installation. Okay, so the other thing, now that you validated it, you want to get it started. So you basically you want to check if it's already started already. Most likely it's not, so you can use systemctl, podman. So it says inactive. So now we want to start it. Okay, now we check the status. You can see active and it's running. So once podman is running, so the next thing is uh, learning about podman search. So the important thing for this is that like when you're using this command, it's definitely going to be helpful, especially during the test, because during the test, you might not even remember the whole address for it. Plus, you're not going to have internet access. So the great thing is that you can use podman search. So if you use that, you'll be able to search the actual image or container. So you see I type in UB8, which is Red Hat 8. So these are all the images that they have. All right, so specifically the one that I need, I need to pull will be the registry dot access dot red hat dot com slash UB8. Within the colon, I'm gonna put in for the latest image. So right now I'm just basically pulling the image. You don't have to pull the image actually because you can start it on demand, but it's always good to have it on there if you want to make multiple instances. So now if you use the podman images command, we will see that through from the repository and this is the image ID. So this is what you're going to use to start the actual containers. It's created two weeks ago, probably update it and 213 megabytes. So the next thing we want to do is start it. So we can do podman run dash it. So you want to use a terminal. And then you can either copy and paste this or type it in. And then we're going to put in a command. We can do so we can put a command in now. So we can do like uh, ls. You see that we're actually in the container right now. That's the actual container. And if we cat the etc host red hat release, you're going to see that is a red hat Linux release 8.3 now we can exit exit out of it now that we exited it you can actually check you can do the ps a it'll tell you the process it'll tell you that it was created 30 seconds ago and it exited nine seconds ago and actually if you don't name your containers with a dash dash name you're going to see that it names it automatically for you so if we want to stop first, you if you want to um, remove the container, the first thing you're going to do is stop it. So once you stop it, then you can remove it. So you use rm command to remove it. So one is to stop the um, podman, our container, and then the second one is to remove it. And then the last one will be to remove the image.
So the last one to remove the image. But to remove the image, you actually have to type in the container ID. So that's removing it. And now that we check, we don't have any containers there. So if we stopped it and removed the container, we'll still have the image that we had before, as you can see this ID, and we'll be able to make multiple instances of that actual container. All right, and then the other command that you guys should learn is definitely Scopio. So if you're pulling any other let's say images, you use Scopio inspect. So anytime you're inspecting it, you use the docker colon and then double slash. So you can actually type in the same command that we typed in earlier, or I mean address. So technically speaking, you can always inspect it before you download. So this will give you more information about it. So the Scopio inspect is definitely part of the test. So learning how to use Scopio. Okay, so now it downloaded. So this is all the information about this particular particular container. As you can see, it tells you when it was created. It tells you the architecture, OS, and all the other information. All right, so we're going to clear that now. So the next thing is we're going to be learning how to actually make a Apache server on demand. Um, basically, we're not downloading the image. We can just get it straight from the repository. So the first thing we're going to do is podman-d, which means it's detached, meaning that it's going to be running in the background. Next thing, we're going to use the name command. Um, remember, if we don't name it, the actual service will name it itself. So we're going to call it Apache. Um, then we're going to get we're going to use a dash p. So this is just mapping um, your port on your local machine to the actual container. So we're going to map our port 8000 to 8080. And um, after that we map this, we're going to actually give it uh, persistent storage. So I haven't made the folder yet, but we're going to make it. So the folder we're going to use is web data, which will be in our home folder. And then we're going to map this to var www.html. So um, if you guys are not familiar with uh, HTTPD or Apache, so basically this is the um, folder that comes by default. And this is where your actual like um, index.html or your home page will be and then this is actually our page right here and this is the delimiter so basically saying that um, you're separating it from right here okay so now that we have all these commands here the last command that you want to use actually before that we do that you want to put the um, capital Z on here for SE Linux because if you don't use this correctly um, basically um, for the security policy it's not going to allow it to uh, use this location because this location is not related to the Apache server or the container. So now that we have all these things, which is very important to have during the test, um, is we're going to put in the actual container that we're going to be using. So we're going to use the HTPD 7. So last one thing I did forget you guys is to um, type in the run command. Okay, there it is. So right now it's downloading it as in a make it instant. So this is very important. Um, now that we have it downloaded and stuff, we're going to make this persistent. All right, so I got to make that directory that I... Okay, so what I did basically is said that it was an error because obviously it didn't exist. So I reran the command, and as you can see, this long string of numbers and letters, it just means that it was successful. Okay, so I'm in my home folder now, as I can see. So the next one I got to do is make a folder for my systemd configuration file or service file. So I'm going to make it here. Got to use the dash p command because I'm making subfolders in that folder. So now that I have that, 
we got to check our I mean, I mean our processes let's see so we can see that it's running we have our Apache server running um, it shows you the port that we mapped and shows you the name that we named it and the actual like image that is using all right so the next thing we want to do is actually be able to make this uh, system D service so what we're going to do we use podman generate system D or right, then we're going to we're going to give it the name which is um, Apache and then this is very important that you use the files and new when you're making your when you're making your generating your um, system D so if you don't have files and new then you're not going to be able to uh, set it up properly but first I'm going to go into my configuration folder because that's where I want to actually save this at okay so I have my container apache.service here so the next thing we want to do is go to systemctl and then anytime you're messing around with the container like with systemctl you always use a dash dash user so we're going to use dash dash user and then we're going to use daemon reload so we're going to reload it okay so once that it's reloaded next thing we want to do is um, enable linger so this will basically enable the service to run even though the user is locked out so we're going to do enable linger which is very important to use especially for a rootless uh, container and then you can use show user it'll tell us that linger was enabled all right so the next thing we want to do is actually enable it now so we're going to do enable now and then we're going to put this name container slash I mean uh, dash apache dot service okay awesome so now we have the actual container that it's persistent now so what I'm going to do I'm going to make a file Or as you can see that I'm echoing hello into a file called test.txt. So I'm going to use the curl command. All right, so this is basically going to tell me if the actual like Apache server is working. As you can see, the website loaded or the default web page. So that's awesome. So that means that it's working. Now we're going to clear that. And then now what we're going to do, we're going to go to that uh, test.txt because remember we mapped our web data home. Um, the web data folder in our home fo um, home folder with the actual folder in var slash www.html so as you can see it says hello so meaning that we're able to actually access our home folder which means that is persistent storage so yeah so that's pretty much it um, in a nutshell um, we went over the pulling the images stopping the images removing the images um, using Scopio to inspect uh, we also went through uh, downloading, obviously, using container tools because it's a module. It's not a daemon. It's a module. So always remember that. Um, using the Podman search function. So with the search, you can actually search images. So if you ever get lost, you can literally type whatever image you're looking for in the test um, and be able to download it. And then the next thing is we know the dash dash name command because um, you have to use a dash dash name. Um, that way you can name your container instead of it being named dynamically. And then the last one was making the system D configuration file. So the most important thing is to use the dash dash file and the dash dash new, especially when you're making it. Um, and then when you when you are making um, the file to be persistent storage, remember you have to use the colon dash Z at the end of it because uh, of SE Linux. So that's pretty much it. Um, and if you guys like this contact, please uh, su subscribe. And if you guys have any questions or I uh, wanna leave any comments, uh, please feel free. free to do so. Um, thank you guys and um, enjoy the rest of your day.